middle example, right? Once again, graph of f prime is shown. It's very important whether you know it's the derivative or the original function that you have a graph of, right? So, how am I going to find f of 0? Can I do 3 to 0 of f prime of x dx is equal to f of 3 minus f of 0? Why is 3 on the bottom? Yeah. With your integral. Shouldn't be, should it? Because I wrote it upside down, I guess. Because it would be. It has to be that way to be f of 3 minus f of 0, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I did that. I guess I just messed up. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And by the way, as I've graded some of the papers you've turned in, remember it's always f of the top minus f of the bottom. Some of you are doing it backwards, and that makes a difference. So, what is this value? Four? So does four equal five minus f of zero? So what is f of 0 going to be? Two, two, 1. Right? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm already like... What? Uh, like what? Lost, so like, every day we get okay. Tell me what you don't understand. I don't even know how to do Yeah, where did you get... Four? Look at the graph. Yeah. Huh? From 0 to 3, the area is 4. Oh, it's always oh so this is all dealing with the area? Yes. Where did it... So, half of 3 is 5. Uh, 4 equals 5. Are we out over here? Yes. Okay. So, so, all that's saying is that in the interval 3 to 0, or, or 0 to 3, f of x, or prime x equals 4. The area of that integral is, remember, area is positive, integral is negative. Right? That's true. Yeah. So then our answer tells us that at f of 0, the is 1 or? No. f of 0, the value of the function is 1. The value when x is my original function, when x was 0, y was 1. That's what it told me. Didn't it? Yes. Okay. Can we go to b? Yeah. What am I going to do with b? What's my integral going to have to be? Three to seven. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Uh, the derivative is equal to what's it equal to? Seven minus seven. F of seven minus f of three. Right? Now, what's the value of the integral of 3 to 7? Negative 9. Okay. Right? So negative 9 equals f of 7 minus 5. Is that right? So does that mean that f of 7 is negative 4? Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yes. See how this works? Now, do you trust your answer on f of 7? So that we do the next integral, 7 to 9. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or do you want to do it 3 to 9? 7 to 9. 7 to 9. 3 to 9. I mean, should you get the same answer either way? You should, it's fine. But do you want to use an answer you just found? I'm going to say no. I wouldn't. 
Because I wouldn't take that chance. But you're always right, so. Yeah, that's true. On this problem, I would take the chance. Well, I believe it. So, can I do three to nine? Uh, my integral is equal to f of nine minus f of three. Correct? Mm -hmm. What is the integral from three to nine? Negative seven. Yeah, negative seven. Negative seven? Yeah. Negative seven equals f of nine minus five. So what is f of nine? What does that mean? That means in my original function, when x was 9, y was 2. That's what that means. Now, what does the next one say? Sketch the graph of f. Sketch the graph of f. Mm -hmm. Don't we have some points? We sure do. Okay, what points do we have? 0, 1, 7, negative 4. Hang on. 0, 1, 3, 5, and it is a sketch, and 7, maybe 4, and then don't I have one more? 9, negative 2. Now, if I look, looking at the derivative, from 0 to 3, my function is increasing, isn't it? <coughs> so it, it, wait a minute. My question now is, is it concave up or concave down? For the first part, from 0 to 3. From 0 to 3. This piece right here. Zero to one and a half is concave up, and one and a half to three is concave down. So I would say it's going to look like this. What would you say? Because right? it's got to kind of curve up and then curve down. Because if whatever the tangent line is, if it's positive, it's concave up. If it's negative, it's concave down. Yes, Hunter? So I just like did it this other way, just to see what that nice to do it. Get the same thing as this. So I don't know if it's because I did it wrong or what. But like 7 to 9 would be 2, right? Uh-huh. And then I plug in negative 4 for f of 7, so it would be minus a negative. So it would be f of 9 is 6. No, because you have to subtract 4 over here. It would give you a negative 2. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. How did I know what? Uh, 1.5. Well, I just guess. When you look at the graph that you're given, somewhere between 1 and 2, it's the tangent line switches from a positive slope to a negative slope. I don't know exactly where. I just know somewhere in there. Does that make sense? <coughs> What does it mean whenever it goes below the x-axis? Does that mean it goes below the x-axis on our no. function? No. Okay. Right here, this is 3. On my original graph, isn't this tangent line positive? Isn't this tangent line negative? Which means over here, this is up and this is down. So somewhere in here, it switched from concave up to concave down. Now, it's uh, decreasing from 3 to 7 because it's below the axis, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is it, I believe it's always, well, concave down to about 5. Mm -hmm. 
so it stays concave down and then switches to concave up. Do you see that? Yes. And then what does it do at the end? It's positive right here, mm -hmm. so it must be increasing. And it's concave up and switches to concave down at the very end, doesn't it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. Like that? Wow, that's a child. You had no idea that's what all that told you, did you? No idea at all. I still don't know. All right. Now, can you all work this kind of problem? Yes. Yeah. Where you're finding these values? Yes. yes. All right. Let's do this last example. All right. A pizza with a temperature of 95 degrees centigrade is put into a 25 degree room when T equals zero. The pizza's temperature is decreasing and this estimate the temp temperature when T equals five. What does it start at? So am I going to take 95 minus how much it changes? Would you agree? Yeah. It changes the integral from 0 to 5 of 6e to the negative 0.1t dt. That's how much the temperature changes. So I'm going to take 95 minus what it changes. Yeah, why would you not? Why would you not just plug 5 in for T? You can't plug 5 in for T because that's not the way it works. So is this an F of B minus F of A? Problem? Well, yep, it's an F of B minus F of A. But let me ask you a question. Do you know how to take the antiderivative of that? I do not. Then guess what? How you find that value? Right. Well, we have uh, okay, so I have a question. Does our RAM program and where we do math, F and I and T, is that a different? Do they give you different things? Well, the math, the RAM program, you have to know how many pieces you're dividing it into. Seven. Uh, so we're not. Okay. See the difference? Yeah, okay. Let's hope. So does anybody have an answer when they type this in their calculator? 38.3.6.1.8. Program? Yes. I also got that one. Uh, I guess that's that. Yeah. Are you going to be remote? Oh, that shouldn't even matter. That shouldn't matter. What did you get? For a final answer or for the... For your final answer. For my final answer, I got 56.077. Oh, That's the right answer. Oh, it is. Why? Wow. So... Oh, yeah, it is. I forgot my... Description. Oh, I put... I didn't put a negative. 95 minus that. That's the other thing. Yep, so, all of you all that figure out where you put it in wrong. Yep. yep. Okay, we're doing worksheet on fundamental theorem of calculus, and I'm going to say it's due Monday. <coughs> now we're going to take book questions. It doesn't look like what we just did to you. Not. But they'll have to fill out the graphs. The graphs are we can start with the graphs. The first problems we did did not have graphs on that work on that paper we just did. Well, we sure look back at the works. Yeah. All right. Book right. questions. I just thought sixteen and eighteen were too easy, and I'm scared that I forgot. I couldn't do sixteen and eighteen. Okay, sixteen. Okay, sixteen. First of all. Notice that my x is on the bottom. Yes. So I'm going to have a negative out front of my equation, yes. or my I answer. Have a question. I have a question. Hey, what? Uh, it's just like, really quick. If, if we, when we put the negative, do we switch them around? Like, do we make 
make it 25 to 5x squared? Or do we keep it at 5 I just, It doesn't matter if you rewrite it. Then, everywhere there is a t squared in the problem, you put a 5x squared. So on 16, I have negative, oh, I have negative, and then I have 5x squared squared minus 2 times 5x squared, right, plus 9 over 5x squared cubed plus 6. Then, it's going to be times the derivative of 5x squared, which is what? This whole thing is times 10x. Oh, okay, I have one. Okay, so... But you're not going to leave it in this form. You're going to simplify it. Do we have to multiply the 10 by... Like, do we have to distribute the 10? I would prefer you did. Okay. Oh. I, really, I forgot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Where the 5 and, like, no, the 5. So that's probably what I would do. Okay, so then, and then it's going to be the same thing for the second... Or for 18, right? Yes, the exact same thing for 18. Okie doke. Could we do... Or look at... 42. Hold on. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure what I did. Hold on. Hold on. He said, hold on. No, I, I, I got an extra one. Just keep in mind. Mm -hmm. I actually don't have to make me going crazy. Sure. That'd be awesome. Yeah, dude. Thanks. I bought like a 15 pack of these. Can I get a beer? I have a lot of them. We just can go 10x. We do it to. I can't. On the top, because it's 10x over 1. No, 18 is just like it. Exactly. The derivative, just put it out front on 18. Because you can't distribute through LN. 22? is simple, simple. It is 8 to x. <coughs> it's an x, e to the t, and t. Don't start, Griffin. With a cold. That's all. That's all you do on twenty-two. Nope. You don't do anything else. Um, uh, there could be. Okay, listen, you want to look at 42? Yes. Okay, so I have y equals 3x squared minus 3, right? And I'm looking where? From negative 2 to 2. Is, yeah. Okay. So this is what I do. You could graph it on your calculator unless it is a no calculator problem. And there will be some of those. So what I do is I look and I say, when x is negative 2, what is y? Um, 
9. So I'm up here. Yes. It's going to be the same thing at 2, isn't it? Okay, tell me what shape this is. Parabola that opens up. Yes. You all should know that, do you? So what I need to know is, between these two numbers, does it drop below the x-axis? So I need to pick a number between them. What's right in the middle? Zero. 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 I would pick zero. When x is zero, is it y? So somewhere it does this, correct? So I've got some above the axis and some below the axis. So what I've got to find is where it crosses the x-axis. What happens when a graph crosses the x-axis? What is the y value? Zero. So I set this equal to zero, and when I solve it, I get plus or minus one. No, that's just, that's just ordinary algebra, ordinary math. Well, now, how am I going to, what does it ask for, by the way? Ask for area. area. So I know I'm positive, right? Yes. So isn't this going to be from negative 2 to negative 1 of 3x squared minus 3 dx plus negative 1 to 1? of 3x squared minus 3dx plus 1 to 2, isn't it? So I have three integrals that I work with, right? What's the d of x and what's after that? What? There's 3x squared minus 3dx backwards L. What is that? Plus. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, because I find each integral and I add them together. So what's my antiderivative? X cubed minus 3x. <laughs> negative 2 to negative 1. Then do it again. From what? Negative 1 to 1. And do it again. from 1 to 2, right? Yeah. Now, is everybody where I am? I am there. I don't know how we got there. Why don't you know? I'm confused on how we got all the numbers. All what numbers? Negative 2 to negative 1, negative 1 to 2. Where eight. did that graph cross the x-axis? Negative 2. No, it didn't. Where did it cross the x-axis? No, it didn't. Where did it cross the x-axis? Um, positive 1 and negative 1. That's where I got the 1s. Okay, but why? Because some of the graph is above the x-axis, some is below, and I have to do it separate. So whenever it's negative 1 to 1, it's above and below the x-axis? No, negative 1 to 1, right here to here, it's all below. Well, but look at the stuff above it. There's all that space above it, too. I am looking for the space between the graph and the x-axis. The stuff between the graph and the x-axis is this. And all of that is below the axis. But it's all below it too. But it's not between the graph and the x-axis, is it? If I stand right here, this is the space between Hunter and I. There's all this space back here. But only this is the space between us. This right here. Isn't this, isn't the graph right here and all this between? The doesn't this, it's a parabola. Right? I just, yeah. Doesn't this parabola go up forever? I would assume so. So how am I going to find space between here and the x-axis? I don't know. I can't. What about this then? I, this is a piece I'm finding right here. Oh. And this piece. That's what? That's what negative 2 to negative 1 is. Okay. That's what 1 to 2 is. Hold on now. If we 
we can't find the space above the x-axis, how can we find it to the outside? Because it's just going to go by Because the it tells no, it tells us to stop at negative two. Otherwise, you could not. Can we stop at negative two? Huh? Can we stop at negative two? That's what we're doing. From the top. Yeah. Yeah. Here is here is my parabola. Okay. Whoops. No, it's not. Yeah, because I was trying to do this, and I like just made like a rectangle, and then I was like, I guess. Here is my parabola. Outside area. I find the the area from here to here. Yeah. Between the graph and the x-axis. This part is between the graph and the x-axis. That's negative 2 to 1. Okay. This part is between the graph and the x-axis. Okay. That's negative 1 to 1. Uh -huh. This part is between the graph and the x-axis okay. from 1 to 2. Okay, but, but. Why did you because, take the antiderivative? Because that graph is from negative 2 to 2. So all that space in the middle, from negative 2 to 2, we should be able to find the area that we can stop at 2. Uh huh. So we're not doing that for what reason? Not doing what? Finding the area in the middle. Because this, it's there's, no, it, this, there's no graph in here. All I'm doing between the graph and the x axis. Alright, I would just let it go. Okay. Yes, Harris. I'm confused on why we took an antiderivative in the first place. Because isn't that how we solve an integral? By taking the antiderivative? Yeah, isn't a value of an integral the, the antiderivative of f of b minus f of a? But we didn't, so we're not subtracting, we're adding. No, we're not. I said right here, it's going to be f of B minus F of A. Oh, okay. I okay. just haven't got there yet. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, okay, maybe you're the best answer to this, but are you allowed to get negative areas, or do you change them to positive? Because Area is absolute value. That's Integrals true. are negative. Yeah. Okay. So now, aren't I going to do F of negative 1? Yep. What is that? Uh, negative, no, positive 2. Okay. Yeah. So I have 2 minus negative 2. It's 2 minus negative 2. So it becomes plus 2. Yes. Plus. Um, plus negative 2 minus 2. So when I put negative 1 in here, I get negative 2 minus and I put 1 in, right? Yeah. What does that become? Plus 2. Plus 2? Wait, no, I'm, I'm saying that it was it was a positive 2, so it's still minus. It's negative 2 minus 2. Negative 2 minus 2. It's 0. No. Negative 2 minus 2 is minus 0. I thought it was positive. Is that right? Yes. Then we plug, we plug 2 in. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that give me 2? Yes. Minus, what do I get when I plug 1 in? Negative 2. So plus 2? Mm-hmm. So the area of this is 4, the area of this is 4. Does that make sense yeah. that it is the same on both sides? Yeah, it's 4. What is this area? Negative four. 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 Because it's absolute value. Because it's absolute value. Yeah, that's, that's what I was just asking. Right? Well, I think Mr. Riggs is going to wash your dryer set. Do you think you might try to stay focused? So what is the answer to this problem? Twelve. Twelve. Yeah, I, got, I got how you had four plus four plus four is twelve. All the other stuff. No, yeah, I, I'm just never going to know. If you give me a problem like this, there's no way that I'm going to know. Well, you better because the problem's going to get a whole lot harder than this one. Yeah. Yes. This is okay. a simple one. Uh, Let me ask you this question. And I just, some of you, it's going to blow your mind and just say, okay, I'm not ready for that yet. 
Some of you are ready for this. I'm ready. Could I, if I went back to this original graph, which looks like this, could I have said that I want two times the integral from 0 to 1 plus the integral from 1 to 2? Yes. So wait. Could I have done yeah. only this piece, the right side right here, mm -hmm. and double it? Yeah. Because it is symmetric. Okay. It is the same on the left side of the y axis and the right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got that. So I'm you can't do that on 44 minutes. Because it's not the same. It has to be the same. Now, what's your next question? Well, graph it. Plug in values. On 44. A cube. See, now I don't know what the graph looks like, so I'm just Okay, so 44. Plug in negative 2 and tell me what you get. Negative 8 minus negative 8. Zero. I get 60. Zero. So I have a value here. Right? When I plug in 2, don't I get 0? <laughs> right? What about when I plug in the middle number, zero? I still get zero. So this one, it's a straight line. So it's a straight line. I can plug in negative one. Wait, is it? No. Did you graph it on your calculator? Yeah, between negative and two and two, I can get what, when I plug in negative 1, what do I get? When I plug in negative 1, you've got in your calculator, thank you. I get 3. And then did I get 0, 0? So does it kind of do this? And then what do I get when I plug in 1? Which gives me that. Doesn't it? Okay. Or is it symmetric? Okay. I'm going to tell you it is symmetric if you're doing area. Yes. It is not if you're doing the integral. Why? Because sums above and sums below. Understand that difference? Yes. There is a difference in integral and area. So the only, but the only difference is how we solve for it. We don't, there's no difference in how we solve for integral and area, right? But area, you take yeah, absolute yeah. value. So for this one, could I actually do this integral from negative 2 to 0? You want to do negative 2 to 0? I want to do 0 to 2. Yeah, I like keeping it positive. Well, okay. Of what? X cubed minus 4X? I'd rather be negative for the front of X. So, isn't this X to the 4th over 4 minus 2X squared from 0 to 2? And it's going to be absolute value. And by the way, isn't it going to be times 2, right? So 2 times, what do I get when I plug 2 in? Negative 4. Don't I get 4 minus 8, right? But that is go minus 0? Yeah. Isn't this going to be 2 times 4, which is 8? Yeah. 
I plugged two in here, and that gave me four minus eight. I thought you, I thought you said that eight was the value of zero. No, the value of zero was zero. So I have nothing to subtract from it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is it area? I could That's that. area because it was absolute value. I feel like I could have done that. I think you could have too. That's why I assigned it to you. Now, do we have another question? I What? Guys, thank you. On forty eight, I'm going to do. I need you to really think. Okay, can you do that? Would you agree? I'm going to be from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of sine of x dx. Correct? Yes. Minus, I've got to take out that rectangle, don't I? What is my height of that rectangle? Okay, is the height of that rectangle the sine of pi over 6? Is the height of my rectangle on 48 the sine of pi over 6? Well, look where the y is. Isn't the y the height? Is it sine of pi over 6 equal to the y? Yeah. And by the way, sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. You should be able to figure that out. Right? So, I'm going to subtract my rectangle. What are the dimensions of that rectangle? One half times four pi over six, you said? Yeah, that'd be two pi over six. That would have been two pi over three, but I didn't reduce it, making sure everybody's with me. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. Now, what is the antiderivative of sine? Negative, negative, no, it's just cosine. No, just cosine. No? Negative. Negative cosine. Negative cosine of x from pi over six to 5 pi over 6 minus what? <coughs> pi over 3? Do you understand why I'm taking off the rectangle? Okay. okay. What is cosine of 5 pi over 6? This must be pi over 6. This is 1, 2, and negative radical 3. So I have radical 3 over 2 minus, what is the cosine of pi over 6? No, it's positive radical 3 over 2 because it's a quadrant 1. Oh, yeah. Right? So is it? But when I make this negative, so does this become plus this? And this is minus what? <laughs> Pi over 3? Mm -hmm. So what is the answer to that? I make it plus. Minus a negative. I thought that it was positive. It was, but I had a negative cosine. So is this radical 3 minus pi over 3? 
Does that make sense to you? Never to 